So I have uh, an update for everybody on Justice Democrats. Before I start, uh, allow me to apologize because I pulled a Bernie Sanders today. Uh, I didn't comb my hair. <laughs> I woke up, I forgot I was busy, and now I'm looking at myself in the monitor like, Ugh. But what are you going to do? It happens. Um, I don't think you guys tune in for the hair, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, again, for those of you who uh, maybe don't know about Justice Democrats yet, uh, I highly recommend you go watch uh, my initial segment on it, which is over an hour and 15 minutes long. And in that segment, I lay out the platform for Justice Democrats and what we represent and what we're trying to do uh, moving forward. So it gives you a really good idea, a good sense of uh, what we stand for. And obviously, uh, we launched this in conjunction uh, with the Young Turks, who have a, a massive reach, an even bigger reach than I do. They have over 3 million YouTube subscribers. We have uh, 450,000 or so. Uh, but the idea was, let's go ahead and and muster up the the progressives and the liberals in the country, the, the principled people, and get rid of the corporate Democrats, and get rid of the establishment Democrats, and build a movement from the ground up in order to do that. And it, I wanted to give everybody a little bit of, you know, what went down behind the scenes when we launched this, so you understand where we're all coming from and, and what the philosophy is and stuff like that. So first of all, let me go ahead and give you uh, these updated numbers, and they are colossal. They're out of this world. I think we're on to something here. So for sign up, so people who are supporting Justice Democrats, people who uh, cared enough to sign their name in support of it, so these are effectively the Justice Democrats. You have so far, remember, it hasn't even been four full days yet. 78,000. I don't know who's keeping track. Um, I don't know if anybody ever did keep track, but that might be a record. I Is there any other movement where you launched it and that quickly it gets to those kinds of numbers? I don't know. In fact, I don't know if if Bernie Sanders' campaign itself, when he launched in within four days, there were that many people uh, behind his movement. Because I don't know if you guys remember, but there were there were pictures of Bernie's early rallies. Because he really is, unless you're a political junkie, you didn't know him. He's an obscure senator from Vermont. Uh, but there were pictures of his early rallies, and it was like four people sitting in lawn chairs. And Bernie up there ranting about money and politics and income inequality. So he effectively built up this grassroots movement. And now there's a, a populist left feeling in the country that's just waiting to get tapped into. And I think we may have started that here. I think we may be uh, graduated to the next level and we're building a sustainable movement to do the right thing here and get rid of the corporate Democrats. Now, in terms of how much has been raised so far, now remember, all of this, small money donors, all of this, working people, whether they be teachers, whether they be union guys, whether they be accountants. So this is, we don't allow donations from corporations and billionaires. But so far, $270,000 has been raised. Now, where does that money go to? This is a very uh, important question. First and foremost, I am taking zero dollars and zero cents for being a, a part of Justice Democrats. I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't want a dime. I don't want a penny. I don't want anything. It's totally nonprofit. The same thing goes for uh, Jank at TYT. The same thing goes for everybody that's doing this. So that money is going towards building the infrastructure and actually running the candidates, which leads to my next point. Justice Democrats is registered as what's called a hybrid pack. So that allows the money. So we raise the money and again, doesn't come to me, <laughs> doesn't come to, to any of us. It's actually going to be used to run these candidates. Now that's, I mean, you can't beat that. We're building grassroots from the bottom up and... This is the framework and this is the guidance that I think everybody wanted because 
we all probably had similar feelings right after the election, but there wasn't a way to harness it. Well, now the framework is there to harness it. And again, I have to give a tremendous amount of credit to Shoycott and Zach, because these are Bernie campaign officials, top Bernie campaign officials, who got together with myself and with Jank of TYT, and we ironed out all the details. And they dot the I's, they cross the T's, they vet the candidates, they train the candidates, they run the candidates, they're... The amount of work and the kind of work that they put in is work that I am simply incapable of doing. I don't have the time, I don't have the skill set, and this would be impossible without them at the helm uh, effectively leading it. So I have nothing but love and adoration and credit for those guys, and they deserve all of it. Uh, now, in terms of how many donors we have, 11,700 people have contributed so far, uh, but... Perhaps the most important number to me is the number of actual nominations we have. So if you go to justicedemocrats.com, you can sign your name in support of it. Uh, you can donate, but also you can nominate a candidate. You could say, hey, I want you guys to look into me, or I want you guys to look into my buddy, uh, who I think would be good at representing the community. And then there's the process in place where these people get vetted. And the best candidates are picked, and then we actually run them against the corporatist Democrats. We're not playing around, man. Like, that's the thing that was so exciting to me about this, is... Now the infrastructure's there, we're setting up the infrastructure, and you're building it! You're the ones that are building it, you're the ones who are supporting it! So, and that's all we can ask for, because... The, remember, the corporate Democrats have an institutional advantage because they get to go to corporations and billionaires so they can meet 20 people in a smoke-filled back room and get all the infrastructure they need uh, if a sufficient number of them are billionaires and really willing to contribute. We are not doing that. We refuse to do that as a matter of principle because we understand that incentive structure and we understand human nature and we understand it's I scratch your back, you scratch mine. So if we're only taking money from accountants and construction workers and teachers and regular people and working people... Well, then we're going to represent them. So, and obviously there's a pledge to take no corporate money, no billionaire money. And then you fight to actually get money out of the system. Now, uh, the numbers are great. They're, they really are. And it blows me away how much support this thing is getting. But again, I wanted to dive into uh, a few things here. So, how did this originate? How did this come about? Well, don't lie to me. I know after the election... Many of you were feeling the same thing that I was feeling. This was a, a collective emotion around the country where you weren't only mad. We were mad, but you weren't just mad at the Republicans. You weren't just mad at Donald Trump. But you felt a fire in your belly against the corporate Democrats. Because how many times did we warn them? We told them they didn't listen. In fact, they laughed at us. We told them Hillary Clinton is the last Democrat in the country that should be running against Donald Trump. Why? Donald Trump is positioning himself. He's using the rhetoric of a populist right candidate. Now, there's plenty of xenophobia and bigotry sprinkled in there and atrocious policies, whether it be banning 1.6 billion Muslims from coming to the country or deporting 11 uh, million undocumented immigrants or doing nationwide stop and frisk or torture, grotesque violation of international law and U.S. law or uh, taking out their families. So he's a monster in many respects. But then a lot of people on, uh, a lot of the establishment Democrats missed it when half the time Trump would say, hey, how about we do no nation building? How about we uh, do massive infrastructure spending? And that's what I mean when I say make America great again. How about I don't cut Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid? How about that? How about I block TPP? How about I say I'm for the workers? How about I rail against NAFTA? So when he said those things, everybody in the establishment Democratic circles would just smugly assume that uh, Trump was so goofy and such a reality star buffoon that everybody could see through him. And that there's no way he was going to win. But they failed to see the populist aspect of Trump. And they also failed to see the establishment status quo corrupt angle of Hillary Clinton. And it takes a lot to overlook that amount of corruption. 
Uh, between her and Bill, they've raised over $3 billion in their careers. I wonder if they're going to do the bidding of their donors. Somebody gives you $3 billion. I wonder if you're going to take those phone calls and, and perhaps try to craft policy ever so slightly in their direction. No, it, you absolutely are. Again, this gets back to human nature. We're talking about a Democratic candidate who supported NAFTA. We're talking about a Democratic candidate who supported TPP and pushed for it 45 times and called it the gold standard. We're talking about a Democratic candidate who supported the war in Iraq, who supports intervention in Syria, who was a key orchestrator of intervention in Libya. We're talking about a Democratic candidate whose claim against Wall Street is, I went down there and told them to, quote, Cut it out. This is comical. Like, I actually laughed when I heard her make that argument in a debate against Bernie Sanders. The flaws were endless. When Donald Trump said, make America great again, what was her response? America is already great. Are you running as a Republican? Because that's just, that's like some shit Ronald Reagan would say. America is already great. Is it great for the 50% of people in America who make $30,000 a year or less? Is it great for the people in Flint whose kids are now getting brain damage? Is it great because we're doing seven different interventions? Is it great because hundreds of thousands of innocent people were killed in Iraq? Why is it great? How is it great? What does that mean? What does that mean? You're supposed to be the candidate of change. You're supposed to be the anti-establishment candidate. In my lifetime, virtually every Democratic candidate said, I am more anti-establishment than my opponent. No, no, not Hillary Clinton. She was above that. And how did that work out? So we warned them, we warned them from the beginning. So in that anger directly after the election, I was in contact with some of the top liberals and progressives uh, around the country. And we had a bunch of conversations. Now, what I was originally going to do is I was just going to go out there on my show in the week after the election and do a big segment where I say, this is the direction the Democratic Party needs to go in. And I lay out all these ideas. I lay out what is basically today the Justice Democrats platform. Back then, it would have just been me yelling into the wind. And it would have been a good segment and it probably would have got over 100,000 views. And, you know, maybe it would have sparked somebody somewhere to do something to get a little more involved. And hey, it's a drop in the bucket, but we inched in the right direction. But no, when uh, one of the people I was in contact with uh, was Jank from TYT. And I told him, look, man, I'm going to do this thing where I, I rail against the Democrats and tell them what they need to do to win. It, it is more or less uh, what I would call or what I would classify as a left Tea Party. Now, not Tea Party in the sense that we're crazy and these are crazy ideas and aren't we obstinate and ridiculous, but Tea Party in the sense that it is an infiltration of the Democratic Party, like the Tea Party was an infiltration of the Republican Party, and we're going to try to force the proper policies that the American people support to, to rule the day in the Democratic Party. Now, he told me, wait, pump your brakes, pump your brakes. You want to do that. He was thinking about something along those lines, too. Other top, dem uh, top liberals and progressives in the country were thinking the same thing. What do we do? Where do we go from here? I just want to ah, get it all off my chest and rant against this broken, corrupt, establishment, corporatist Democrat party. And then he said, let's, let's actually try to do this. So he knows... Bernie Sanders interviewed him a few times and, uh, you know, introduced him at one a, a couple of his uh, his rallies back when he was obviously still running. And so therefore he know, knows and was introduced to top Bernie Sanders officials. So the amount that the amount of effort that goes in to building a presidential campaign and really setting up that infrastructure. Because you got to remember, you have to go from this place to that place to that place to that place. You got to give a speech in that state and then that state and then that state and then that state. The amount of organization that it takes, the structure that's behind it, the, the sheer number of hours that people work to get everything right, it is mind-numbing. So you need masterful organizers to pull it off. Well, it was a match made in heaven. 
you have these organizers who are so superb at dotting the I's and crossing the T's and doing all the necessary, vital, important work that I'm not capable of doing and he's not capable of doing. They were introduced, there were phone calls made, and then the groundwork was set up. And so now here we are. We had those conversations, we had those discussions behind the scenes. Like I told everybody multiple times already, people who say, well, you know, Democratic Party is the problem, you know, we should have done a third party. We looked into it. Believe me, there were many people who, who said, well, yeah, we should do that because, yeah, the Democratic Party is fundamentally the problem and maybe it's beyond saving. Maybe that's, maybe that's what it is and we got to face the, the gross reality of it. The more we researched, the more we found out, according to our calculations... Being a third party handicaps you so much that it would be much harder for us to actually win that way. Now, again, that's not me saying it's the third party's fault. I love many of the third parties. Um, but it's like taking a sledgehammer, swinging it at a kneecap, and then the person can only hop and saying, okay, now go run the marathon. We didn't want to swing a sledgehammer at one of our kneecaps. And I still consider those third parties with the ideology that coincides with our ideology... There are allies. I got nothing against the Greens. I got nothing against the Dem Socialists. I love them. We calculated that we can be allies with these kinds of people and take over the Democratic Party in the process. Because, and this gets to another point here, the institutional issues. So, for example, when I originally registered to vote, I didn't want to register as a fucking Democrat. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to do that? I wanted to be an independent, but it was explained to me that, hey, you got to understand something in your state, New York, just like many states around the nation. If you do that, you will not be able to vote in Democratic primaries. They are closed primaries. So then I didn't have a choice. The Democratic primary is perhaps the most important vote you cast every election. So what am I going to do? Put myself on the sidelines and not vote in the most important election because I care that much about a title that I'd rather have independent by my name instead of Democrat? No, I, I, you're painted into a corner. Now, it may be gross that we're painted into a corner, and it is. But we're in a corner. So you gotta accept the reality. So what do you do? You have to wage the revolution from within and without. So those people are my allies. And just as Democrats, we support plans that would make the third parties viable options. But facts are facts as they are right now, and even if you talk to those parties, they'll tell you, yeah, we're not, we're, we haven't had the success we wish we had because of the institutional biases against us. Correct! So you gotta wage the fight from within and without. We're going within, and we're gonna take over the Democratic Party, and we're gonna kick out the corporatists. Why would we concede the battle to them? Go ahead, you have one of the two major parties in the country, and let's have no actual liberal, progressive, populist, uh, representatives in one any of the two major parties and have, have all the good people who care about the right things and want to fight for the people outside. Why would we do that? That is conceding the fight to the worst factions in the country, the most corrupt factions in the country. So we decided uh, to take over the Democratic Party and obviously I think people understand. I think they get the gist of this thing. Now, I want to go ahead before we wrap up for today on Justice Democrats and give everybody... Um, one more point here. Look, I'm, I'm in touch with the YouTube community and with people who are skeptical, and in some cases, people who are cynical. So let me be clear about something. I'm skeptical too. I have no idea if this is actually going to work. But I know one thing. We have to fucking try. Because if we don't, what then? If not now, when? So, it's on you and me. And it's not that we can't do it, and it's impossible to do it. It's just that it's really, 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 really hard. So the way I look at that, that's all the more reason for us to fight harder. We got to show them that there's still people power in this country. You have to keep reminding yourself, when you look at the opinion polls, 
people are with us. They are with us. They are with us. They agree with us on the policy issues. And when it comes to our most important thing, getting money out of the system, having clean elections, so that the politicians represent the people and not the corporations and the donors, that's one where even a majority of Republicans agrees with us. So, we have the people on our side. Now, there are some people who say, you, you don't get it, Kyle. The Democratic Party is so broken and so corrupt that we shouldn't even try to take it back. I would tell those people, if that really is the case, that there is zero hope, how is it that Bernie Sanders is a sitting senator right now? Oh, it's too broken, it's too corrupt, you'll never get a progressive in there, you'll never get a real liberal in there, you'll never get a principled politician in there. You say never, but never already isn't the case. We have Bernie Sanders as a sitting senator. One of the 100 most powerful people in the country is Bernie Sanders. If it can happen in Vermont, it can happen in Nebraska. If it can happen in Nebraska, it can happen in Minnesota. If it can happen in Minnesota, it can happen in California and New York and Hawaii and Florida. It's not impossible. It's just really, really hard. Yes, there are massive institutional biases uh, against us. But there is still hope. We know there's hope because Bernie Sanders is a sitting senator. We have a progressive caucus. Now, I'm willing to meet people who are still skeptical halfway and say, you know what? Yeah, maybe a decent number of those people in the progressive caucus are only so-called progressives. And they're not, they're not great at least 25%, probably more, of the Progressive Caucus actually are great. So it's not impossible. It's just hard. And we have to wage the fight. So we have to build this thing from the ground up. It's on you and me, nobody else. And that means you go to justicedemocrats.com, you sign up, you nominate somebody, you nominate yourself. And you do your $27 donation. Because again, one of the biggest institutional biases against us is that corporations and millionaires prop up the corporate Democrats, the establishment Democrats, like there's no tomorrow. So they will almost always have more money. But in a weird way, Donald Trump on this point should give people a little bit of hope. Because he is a reality star buffoon. And just by having a dash of populism in his campaign, even though he raised less money than the juggernaut Hillary Clinton, he ended up winning. If a populist right candidate can take over not only the Republican Party, but the country, you don't think a populist left candidate can take over the house of cards that is the corporate Democrats? No, of course they can. So don't let your skepticism, which is healthy, and again, I'm a skeptic too. I don't know if it's going to work, but we have to try. Don't let your skepticism become cynicism, because at that point, you're just standing in the fucking way. And you need to take that for a hike, take that for a walk, while the rest of us do the goddamn hard work that needs to be done to get to the point where we have policies for the people implemented. So this is a hostile takeover of the Democratic Party by the Bernie wing, and... We're going to fight, and we're going to fight on, and we're going to fight on. And I don't care how fucking long it takes. I don't care how difficult it is. I don't care how many sleepless nights there are. This isn't about any one of us individually. It's about fighting for these ideas, fighting for these concepts, and reforming the Democratic Party to be what it was supposed to be all along. So come join us, justicedemocrats.com. The fight is just beginning, and we need you. We need you. You need to run, you need to sign up, you need to get involved, you need to do the organization, because nobody's coming to save us. We are the only ones who are going to save ourselves, so let's get after it.